Hello, this is Brian Fairchild with Extivia. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to set up a basic SQL replication environment in DB2. I have a remote Linux system with both my source database and target database running and I'm going to be using my laptop with Windows and DB2 Express. I'm going to use the replication center in DB2 Express to set up, configure replication on my remote system. So I've cataloged my remote system in my DB2 on my laptop. I have replication open, uh, replication centers open here. I can go to manage passwords and connectivity and you can see I already have my source and target databases recognized in replication center. I did that when I clicked add and I could add any, any database that I had already cataloged in my laptop. Okay, first step is to Create a capture control server. Capture control server is on the source database. Select my source. The source is going to host capture only. DB2 wants to create a default table space to, co to hold all the capture control tables. We're going to go with the defaults here. This will generate a script. The script is generated. Again, this is going to create a table space and all my capture control tables on my source database. Click OK to run now. script is successful. Okay. So my capture control server set up and ASN schema is automatically created. Now I can go to register tables. Right click to register a table. We're going to replicate the employee table. Okay, this creates a CD table. CD stands for, stands for change data. This is on the source database again. There's going to be a change data table for each table you want to replicate. By default, it's called CD and then the table name. By default, it wants to create a new table space. We're going to go ahead and use the defaults for that. And it wants to create an index for the CD table. We're going to use all the defaults. We're going to uncheck this, which is for Update Anywhere replication. We're only doing one-way replication. The script is generated. Again, this is on the source database to create the source or the CD table and the table space it goes in. Okay, now we have the employee table set up for repl replication on the source. We're going to set up an apply control server. This goes on the target. Our target is going to apply captured changes only. DB2 wants to create a table space for all the apply control tables. In some cases you may want to use a, an existing table space for these, but I do recommend keeping them separate. So its own table space is a good idea. Okay, so now our target is set up. Now I have to do a, uh, create a subscription set. We set this up this is how the uh, target and source talk to one another. You can create multiple subscription sets. We have one table, we're going to create one subscription set. One qualifier, AQ01. Here's our source. Here's our target. We're going to activate it. Source to target mapping is where I include the tables for this subscription set. The 
The source register table is db2inst1.employee. The target is db2inst1.tg employee. DB2 wants to name it a separate name from the source. It's a good idea, so I put the TG in front of it. If your application uh, isn't going to work with that, you can change the name here and just duplicate the name on the target. We're going to keep it separate. We're going to use time-based replication every one minute for our test. Statements tab lets you set up um, transformation data or how to transform data from a source to target. We don't want to do that. So we're going to generate the scripts that run on both the source and target. Okay, so we have our TG employee um, target table set up, created, ready to accept changes from the source. Now my preference is to use to start replication using scripts on the host server. So this is my Linux system. I've created a directory called SQL rep. In that directory I have uh, subdirectories for my apply logs and for my capture logs. I also have scripts to start capture and apply and scripts to stop capture and apply. To me it's easier to have these right on the system that it's running on. In case I need to stop DB2 for maintenance, I can first run the script to stop capture, and then I can run the script to start capture, uh, vice versa with apply. Here's what the uh, apply start looks like. Here's what the start capture looks like. Okay, here's how we stop apply. And here's how we stop capture. So uh, you can see I just opened up all those uh, scripts for you to take a look at. In the start apply, it's important that you have a password file. Here's the password file flag asmpwd.aut. Now this is how apply communicates with capture. It needs to know the ID and password it's supposed to use to connect to the capture database and pull out data from that change, change data table we talked about. So you need to create a password file using that command and um, you need to have it called in your start apply script. So we're going to start capture first as a background process. So we can see that Capture is running. When I do a list applications, I see that ASN cap process is running on my SAMP SRC database. So I can start apply now. Again in the background. Okay, so we see apply is running. So now we're going to uh, test it out real quick. We're going to select first name, last name, and phone number from our employee table. Let's first connect to the source database. Okay, we're going to update this row and we're going to make sure it gets replicated to the target. So we updated that row to set Alonzo, Roy Alonzo's phone number to 1111. Okay, so it's changed in the employee table on the target side. Let's see if it's been copied to the change data table on the target side. Yes, it has. You can see here's the row, the only row of data that's been changed. So now let's uh, let's um, can, uh, connect to the target side.
and see if it's been updated in the TG employee table. Not yet. Okay, let's go back to Replication Center. We're going to go to Operations, Apply Control Servers. We're going to go to our Apply Qualifier. And now we can check throughput from the time we first started Apply to the current time. You can see that initially uh, Apply ran and picked up 42 rows. That's the initial run. Filled up the, uh, the employee, target employee table with all the data and then we had a run, one row update. So it picked up that change we made to uh, Roy Alonzo's phone number. Let's double check that. Okay, here's the TG employee on the target side table and you can see that his phone number has been updated. So we successfully set up replication using Replication Center and we successfully started and started capture and apply with scripts on the host server. I hope this was some help to you. If you have any questions be sure and contact us. You can reach me through our website at virtual-dba.com. Thank you.